Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Miranda and I'm the Enchantress of Avalon. So we are going to be discussing in this video another Arthurian Legends topic. The topic of discussion for this video is the story of Tristan and Isolde or Tristan and Isolde or Isolde or he's often, he's sometimes called Tristan. So it's all the same story though with a lot of different variations. It is the Arthurian legends. There are many variations. I have not done a video discussing Tristan and Isolde before, so that's going to be fun to get into this topic a little bit. Firstly, it is a legend about a knight who falls in love with a, a queen, or a queen to be more accurately, and their affair continues even after she is married to King Mark of Cornwall. And this story is sometimes thought of to be a legend that was originally not associated with the Arthurian ones and got transmuted into them eventually. But what we do know for sure is it's very much part of the Arthurian canon. It's even in Thomas Mallory's massively popular Le Morte d'Arthur. And this is a huge book. This is basically considered kind of like the definitive collection of all the different Arthurian tales altogether, originally published in 1485. Now, I said definitive. There is no one right telling of the Arthurian legends. They have been passed from oral traditions and then written for many, many, many centuries. And obviously, as I've discussed before, have roots in Celtic legends and myths. So when I say definitive, this is what most people think of and what has passed down in most of our modern tellings of the Arthurian legends, when we see films and television series and such, a lot of that started with this particular book because Mall Sir Thomas Mallory went and researched and collected everything he could at the time to synthesize together what was supposed to be the ultimate telling of the legends and it has inspired everything that's come since. But each different telling of the legends is important in its own right because we can chart the differences and chart the progress of the legend through the centuries. It's something really fascinating. And I did a series of videos on charting Morgan Le Fay's depictions from her earliest written depiction, which was in the Vita Merlini all the way through. And you could do that with any figure in the Arthurian legends. It's a really fascinating thing to do for anyone who's interested in this stuff. But most people, if they've seen anything or read anything about the Arthurian legends, and it was written out, it was published after 1485, or it's, you know, a depiction on film, it's in some way influenced by Le Morte d'Arthur. I can guarantee it's influenced by Le Morte d'Arthur. So that being said, by 1485, the Tristan, Isolde, and Mark love triangle was firmly entrenched within the Arthurian lore canon. So this is why this is an Arthurian video. Now, King Mark is obviously a king from a neighboring kingdom. In the most common variants of the tellings of this legend, he is the uncle of Tristan. And he is an unmarried king, and he is looking for a wife. Which, perfectly logical. You want to have an heir, inherit your throne, etc. Now, there are versions where Tristan isn't his actual nephew but just his ward who he is caring for and that's actually what the film does he raises Tristan like a son but Tristan is his ward and this is the I believe it's 2006 yes 2006 film Tristan and Isolde starring James Franco and Sophia Miles it's actually very very good 
not everyone loves it. I actually really enjoy this film and think that it took a lot of aspects of the different versions of the Tristan and Isolde tale to bring us something that was truly lovely. And it's one of the only versions we really have as a film that focuses on them. So I really love that. I actually don't know of any other films that focus just on the Tristan and Isolde tale without just having them as side characters. Like, in the TV show Merlin, they were side characters. It, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> and uh, I just want to show this book again. This book is a translated telling from a French author. And I just wanted to note that the Waterhouse painting on the cover is absolutely lovely. They were important to, the story was important to the pre-Raphaelites and the pre-Raphaelite style artists because they loved a good tragic romantic tale. So all of that being said, let's get into what the story actually is. The story of Tristan and Isolde is one of a knight being sent to a neighboring kingdom, Ireland. He is a Cornish knight at Mark's court. He is sent to Ireland to broker a marriage, <laughs> win the hand of this woman, and doing so in battle. That's very common. That's in a lot of tellings, he does so by battle. And the telling used in the Tristan is old movie, and it also is in some other tellings, is that he actually had already met her when there was a battle being fought between the kingdoms and he was wounded really badly and she healed him because this Irish princess isn't just a princess, she's also a great healer. She knows a lot of herb lore and a lot of healing magics. And so she's healed him already. And during that time, they'd already fallen in love. And when this is held, this big tournament to determine who would win her hand in marriage and all of these different knights from different kingdoms are coming to try and win her hand the film depicts her as being very excited when she realizes Tristan has won but he was not fighting for her for himself he, and he didn't know who he was fighting for because when that version is used he didn't know she was a princess she was this beautiful young woman who healed him he had no idea she was a princess so there's the irony they everyone loves irony right that's the irony of that tale in other versions they hadn't met before but they do meet and of course she has to go with him overseas on a ship to get to cornwall to eventually marry and she is given a love potion in this wine that was given to her that was supposed to be drank drunk on her wedding night but they didn't know about the love potion and the two of them shared the wine on the ship and fell in love in that way so there are times where they fall in love organically because they actually develop feelings for each other and versions when it's induced by a love potion and obviously this painting is taking the love potion route but either way, they fall in love and sleep together prior to her marriage. But she has to marry anyway. This isn't the idea of you could just rebel and say, I'm not going to marry this person. I don't want to. She was a princess and her hand had been promised to this king. She couldn't say no. In this era when the story is set, she can't say no. So she goes through with the marriage. But... There are some really sort of funny aspects to the story when you get to the wedding night. She is going to, she married him, but well, there's a bit of an issue. She's not a virgin. And in fear of them, him finding out that she's not a virgin, when the room is darkened, a little switcheroo is played. She leaves the room and her handsmaiden, who came with her from Ireland goes into the room and it's her that Mark beds that first night so that 
the whole virginity aspect is not discovered. And Isolde spends that night with Tristan. Yeah. Yeah, they just completely stay sleeping together this whole time. Then there are versions where the love potion wears off and it causes other chaos. There are version, the versions without the love potion. They often stay in love the entire time. And of course there are versions <laughs> where the love potion just doesn't wear off. So they stay in love. Eventually the affair is discovered. Of course it's going to be discovered eventually. And there are variants where Mark wants to sentence them to death. Like there are versions of the Arthurian legends where the Arthur Guinevere, Lancelot part of the Arthurian legends it is, Arthur wants to sentence them to death and Lancelot has to rescue Guinevere from being burned at the stake. Very similarly, there's this rescuing aspect. There are also versions where Tristan does marry and very confusingly and ironically, he marries another woman named Isolde. But she is called Isolde of the White Hands, where Isolde, who is the one he's actually in love with, is Isolde of Ireland, and she's the queen. In those versions, Tristan is dying of mortal wounds after, the ba after a battle. And once again, Isolde, who has healed him before, Isolde of Ireland, is called for. And if she agrees to come on this ship, because in this version, she has, you know, this has all gone down. Tristan has been sent away and Mark and his older still together. Yeah. Uh, royalty. It happens anyway. And when she sent for, there was a coded message of the color of the sales would determine if she had said yes she was com coming to help him or no she wasn't of course she agreed to come help him she was still in love with him she wanted to help save him but his wife who's incredibly jealous knowing that he was in love with another lied to him when he asked what color the sails were when the ship was coming in she said they were the opposite color that the other result was not coming to help heal him so he died before she had a chance to ever see him again, thus ending tragically. In other versions, they do die in other ways. They are put to death. There's a lot of different versions of this. But oftentimes, it ends with them being buried side by side. And one of my favorite romantic twists on this is that two trees are planted, one on each of the graves. And as the trees grow, they grow entwined with one another, an eternal symbol of the love held between Tristan and Isolde. So yes, I just gave a lot of information from a lot of different versions of the tale. It may have been a bit confusing. I apologize if it was. I will again link some blog posts from whiterosevavalon.life down in the description box where I have discussed this legend as well. And I do recommend watching this film if you're interested in the story of Tristan and Isolde and want a cohesive telling of it. It's very beautifully done. And also just read things like, there's this telling retold by J. Bedier and translated by Hilary Bellick. And of course, you could always read Le Mort Arthur by Sir Thomas Mallory. It's a long read, but very worth it for the Arthurian legend buff. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do, please like, comment, subscribe, and check out my blog, whiterosebabylon.life. Have a very fabulous Fairy Friday. Bye now.